Um, it's really important to the project and it's one of the, yeah, the big things that we're looking at. So I've been doing a piece of work looking at that. Um, and as part of that, I've been learning a little bit about mean working emissions reduction. And that's why I've been asked to speak today. I'm not an expert on this, by the way. I'm just someone who's done some reading. Um, so, yeah, and I'm here to hopefully demystify slightly. Um, so, next slide. Oh, have we got a clicker? Hey. So, what is lean? Um, I think sometimes these terms are a bit easy to be intimidated by, um, but it's not intimidating. It, it, when I talk about it, you'll probably be like, well, we're doing that anyway. Um, so it's just kind of formalizing a lot of things that you're probably doing already. Um, so it's a collection of tools and approaches. It's not one thing that you do in one way. It's a collection of tools and approaches which can be applied to set out um, to achieve the principles here. So focusing on the customer, understanding how to do the work, identifying problems and finding solutions, removing wastes and non-value steps. So that can be, you know, cutting down your rubbish, cutting down your resources, reducing your emissions. Um, reducing errors and defects, communication and collaboration. Obviously, we do that with our teams. We do that between ourselves as professionals. We do that with, um, you know, the, the public. And then being flexible. We all know that often we need to be flexible when we're working on projects because things happen. Um, so, yeah, it's a collection of tools. Um, some of those tools include things like pull planning. So you start from the end goal and you work back, reviewing milestones, breaking down the project, you know, People are probably familiar with this. It's a standard project management kind of approach. You create a weekly work plan. Um, the thing about that is it's an active process. And that's the thing about Lean. It's an active process. You do it all the way through your project. It's about monitoring and watching and adapting. Um, it's not a once and done. Um, you can also use things like uh, integrated project delivery, um, where it's a really collaborative approach um, focused on sharing knowledge and sharing insights and communicating with each other, um, which, you know, hopefully we're all comfortable with. Um, you can use workflow mapping. You can divide your sites into zones to try and achieve a more organized and predictable workflow. Um, you can consider time and motion studies. I think this is something that they may have tried to do on the A14 project, where they did try and operate under a lean principle on the archaeology. Um, I don't know. I didn't work on the A14, but I understand that they've yeah they've applied that there and had some successful results actually. Um, and then you're monitoring and optimization which I've just said to, you know, enhance safety, improve productivity, manage risk, up customer satisfaction, uh, whether that's your LPA, whether that's your client, the developer, or whether that's your community. Um, deliver quality, reduce your waste and emissions, fast track delivery, um, and maximize your returns. So as I said, you know, a lot of those are really focused on collaboration. Collaboration is really key to working lean and reducing um you know resources time wasted that's what you're aiming to do you're aiming to reduce time wasted reduce your resources make sure everything's running as smoothly as possible um, it's outcome focused where do you want to be you know what are you trying to achieve you know is that your client saying you know it's customer focused so we often have multiple customers as archaeologists we have yeah as i've said the developer we've had the lpa and we've had the public. So we have these three, what, what are the outcomes that each of them are aiming to achieve? And we have to think about that. And a lot of us do anyway, we do this as part of our WSIs, as part of our project planning. It's pretty standard. And then as I've said, active throughout the project life cycle. Um, and what does success look like in Lean? Cutting your costs or cutting the costs for your client, reducing construction time or reducing the amount of work that you need to do, uh, eliminating waste or wasted time, um, reducing your emissions, um, improved productivity. And of course, yeah, this can all lead to reducing your emissions, reducing your carbon footprint, and all of these are good things. But they can also do things like increase your profits, maybe, which I know that a lot of people are maybe a bit more interested in. <laughs> but anyway, so that that is what is lean. But how how can you apply it in a practical way? Oh, wrong way. So 
on HS2, most of you probably know now, we have this investigation with purpose approach. It's called Historic Environment Research and Delivery Strategy, HERDS. Um, and what the three principles are, creating knowledge, involving people, and establishing a legacy. Um, and it's essentially an outcome-focused approach. So we have research questions that we've set, and we try and do the work to answer those research questions. That's what we're trying to achieve. So this is our integration, our investigation with purpose approach is by in its in its being a, a kind of a lean approach to doing archaeology. If yeah, if we apply it correctly. Um, so this is it's something we have to do as part of our legal obligations of the heritage memorandum. Um, so where does how does this fit in with the previous slide? So involving people, so that's focusing on the customer. We do this through outreach, um, the, out, the outcomes-focused approach, generating knowledge. You know, that's, that's answering, that's involving people, disseminating it, and it's also focusing on the customer. Communicating and collaborating with your team. Um, so on 2B, we have this thing called the one-team approach, where we work across multiple organizations towards the same goal, which, you know, everyone feeds into the program, everyone discusses it, we talk about issues and solutions, it's a real collaborative space. And then obviously there's the stakeholder relationships, the building of trust. Um, and obviously that then, it also goes down to your teams on site, you know, um, shut up and dig your hole. No, no, everyone needs to be involved and understand the bigger goals. You know, what is the end outcome? What is the question you're trying to answer? Where are you trying to get to? What is the program? You know, it's about involving your team in that way rather than just hoping that they will follow along. Um, so creating knowledge. Um, so this is finding solutions to problems. Um, we can find, by creating knowledge, we can find new approaches or techniques to answer the questions that we've posed. So things like that. So what we might term as innovation. This is, this is yeah, this is creating knowledge, this is finding solutions, this is can feed into lean. So, and then you can drive change and innovate. So what can we do better? How can we gain more by doing less? How can we keep our emissions small, but gain the most amount from what the work is that we're doing? Um, and then establishing a legacy is obviously how understanding the work that we've done, how is the work done? Reporting at regular intervals, you know, do you do weekly reports? Do you have weekly project meetings? Are you doing those kind of like, you know, analyzing issues as the project continues? Are you, react are you being reactive or are you being proactive? Lean is a proactive approach because of the way you do it throughout the project. You're always monitoring, you're always watching. I think sometimes we have a tendency to be reactive and we don't deal with a problem until it's happening. Sometimes you can't, I know that, but you can apply lean and maybe you can see those problems coming by the way that you monitor your project. And then obviously leaving an improved skill of an improved legacy of skills and understanding. You know, again, that's a lean principle because the next project will be better because you've trained people. And a lot of lean is about changing mindsets, changing how people think about what they're doing, how they approach what they're doing. Um, so, you know, tidy sites is a big thing in lean. So, you know, have you got one person who's responsible for putting your tools away at the end of the day? Or do they just end up in a big pile in the cabin willy nilly because everyone wants to just get in the van and go home? You know, um, things like that. It sounds silly and it sounds simple, but these are the things that people are applying on big construction sites to make sense and to cut down time lost and to make the most of their resources so that everyone has what they need when they need it and that the right people are in the right place to do the right job. Um, removing waste and ensuring value. We see um, value is a really key for us at HS2. We've got the public purse. We need to make sure that every, every pound we spend is doing good, is doing something, we're gaining something. Um, so we're doing the most, gaining the most for the least spend. And obviously most of your clients will want that as well. Um, and we also want to make sure we're doing the best for the historic environment, that we are conserving it through understanding it. Um, so yeah, and understanding why. So Lean will enable us much more strongly to understand why we are doing something, to think about whether we need to take an action or whether actually no action is the best action. Um, and then there's salvage and reuse. Um, we've been working on this on HS2, uh, things like um, 
Kozol Farms House where we recovered timbers and bricks and sent them to local um, yeah, uh, local projects to be reused. So things like this is all how we can, and that reduces waste then. So that's, again, feeding into lean, reducing your emissions, reducing your carbon footprint. Um, so uh, hopefully I've not run out of time yet. I've only got a short time. Yeah. Uh, so tips for lean. Um, so yeah, make it a culture, not an action. Everyone needs to be doing this all the time through all of your project. Everyone needs to understand it. Maybe not in great detail, but yeah, empower your site workers, communicate with your team, help them understand what it is you're trying to achieve. Um, you know, if there's someone, yeah, just with their head in the hole, they're not going to be motivated to get you where you need to be. Uh, recognizing success and document the impact of change. So let people know, share knowledge. If you've, you know, if you've innovated, if you've done something great and, you know, innovation doesn't have to be big. Innovation can be a small change, but if it's made something better, people need to know. Um, accountability, that's a really big one. Um, you know, again, it comes down to empowering your site workers, make everyone accountable for your end goal, for delivering that project successfully. And then, yeah, establishing your framework of collaboration. Who are your allies? Who do you need to be talking to? Who's going to tell you if the program's on track, if you're on track? Um, yeah, and then the final thing I want to say is defining your value stream. Um, so value stream is a set of actions which takes place to add value to your customer. Um, I know that um, Kate Geary was speaking about value yesterday, and we spoke about value a lot last year's conference, about what is the value of heritage. Um, so it's, it's how you tell the customer what the value is that you are bringing and make sure that you realize that value. It begins with the concept, it moves through all of the stages of development and on through delivery and support. The value stream begins and ends with the customer. So again, it's that outcome focused approach. What are you aiming to achieve? Um, yeah, so that is lean and a little bit about how it applies to heritage. Um, I think that's it. Thanks.